Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Great. Okay, let's get the show started. Yeah, whenever we stop, so we'd have is the, going uh... slow. The intro is going slow. That's a great song to start us with. Chrissy. I'm trying. I'm trying to burn air that is. Is it seriously be... not playing again? Nothing's Nothing. playing. We just got you. So we don't discriminate. Now it's Welcome to show. Everyone Racers. A show designed for the world of low dollar racing. Thing an oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of lemma champ or lucky track dog league you run. SCCA or NASA. We don't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and built it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips, tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, hella sweet, or, or lucky, and Chrissy. 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 And I give you just the tip. We're sure you'll giggle a little. And learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Whoa, it's how did it go? Yeah, Halloween. Halloween. It's thunder. It's, thunder. Wow. it's not even rain. This is Chrissy. Yeah, yeah I'm mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to a Donald Duck episode. It is episode 313. Donald Duck was a classy mofo driving a 1934 Belchfire runabout that apparently uh he oh I what he he was part of the lemons long before lemons existed and he constructed his car from many other parts cars. Uh chances are you might actually be listening to this while you're putting cars together from many other pieces of cars, but get out your bingo card because that's also made out of a lot of pieces. So Donald Duck's car was listed uh has the license plate. I forgot to add that here. Uh license plate of 313. So when you look up 313 cars, that's what you get. Okay, that is actually impressive. I'm gonna link that article because well done. That's that's a deep dive. I know it's a deep dive. There wasn't anything else great for three one three, but I I went to the rabbit hole of Donald Duck and his random car that he built out of pieces. I didn't even I found all of this information before I found the Jalopnik article, but there is a Jalopnik article about um Donald Duck's three one three car, what he did to get make it happen. And the more you the more you know. <laughs> okay what you working on metal start us out i uh just got well not yeah actually just a couple of days ago got back from the colonel in the sinkhole national corvette museum racing with the um inglorious bastards had a great time great time uh shelly Kristen, eric were all there lots of great friendly faces lots of people i hadn't seen in a while because it's been a little bit since i've been out there and uh just a good time with a good team uh, and yeah, had a, had a, had a lot of fun, but as I alluded to in our Instagram post, it is time to play guess the Toro, uh, you... knowing that my co-hosts are not on any social medias. I uh, saw, I saw it, it got transferred to Facebook too. Okay. I'll uh, I'll say just, just the other one does not worst car ever. Ultima. Nope. No, he said no. No, you say what you said in the post because <laughs> this this is the new standard. It now goes Ultima versa this tragedy. So okay, okay. And this is I'm not a reflection to... on the owner itself. The owner, you know, they were just you know doing what they can with what they had, and uh, uh, you know, it, did uh, you think it was going to be decent, or did you think it was just the cheapest thing you could find? It was, and I was going to say, let me qualify it for you guys. Guess so I'll give you another question. I sorted with cheapest and selected this one. Oh, so I, I didn't expect it to be good. I just didn't think it would be this tragic. I, I didn't, I knew the car. I didn't think the car itself was this bad. Uh, Is it a sedan? Hatch, hatch or trunk? Right. Thank you. Hatch. Chevy Spark thing. Mitsubishi Outlander Sport. <laughs> uh, no, Chrissy, do you have a, a guess, or do, was that the Spark was your guess? Uh, a Mirage. The 2011 Suzuki SX4. Mm-hmm. I have oh, to Google it. God. Well, it is a 12 year old yeah. Suzuki. No one is ever going to guess that. Well, and, it, yeah. <laughs> I was not going to guess that. So it's 
Mm. tragically bad CVT transmission. It is comically tall. There was like eight inches over my head on this one. Um, you know, all wheel drive, just uncomfortable seats, unintuitive controls. Everything on this car is just terrible. Randos were walking up to me at the lemons race and going, is that what you're racing? That car is horrible. And everyone, yeah. Like, yeah, people are like, "Oh, this car totally belongs in a lemons race." If you want Class C, the the Suzuki that showed oh. up at Gingerman, at least that one was like the sporty sedan. This one, this one is awful. This car was designed, built, and marketed to people who hate cars. Mm -hmm. Just so so bad. Yeah, it was its only redeeming feature when it was that. Oh, it's all wheel drive. Okay. Like, will, it, will it do anything when you're doing no all not the really drive? and it'll probably keep running despite a lot of abuse because suzuki's are pretty popular in third world areas that, but it, yeah that's i'm about sure it. it'll keep going you'll just want it to die and it won't hmm. <laughs> well, to be fair it's it's it, it, it's a 12 year old model from a company that doesn't sell cars in the u.s I, anymore right well, i was gonna and, say and, like and can you get what parts it takes for to them? be worse than a versa or an ultima and it what is the it, comparable it, like the, to that God, like an out the the you know the mirage the things you were guessing, um, like an impressive. What's funny? It it actually has like it is it is held up. The interior is okay on it and everything like that. It's durable materials. It's just everything is put together on it is just so bad. It, it you could feel it sucking the joy out of you as you were driving. <laughs> oh, oh so, all right. so awful. Hmm. And if you own a Suzuki SX4, I am so sorry. Um, you have another leather thing on here. Do you have something to tell us about this? Because we yes. skipped over something in the middle here. All right. I, I, in, in the, you know, constant either fix it, sell it, or trash it. I have now gotten, in fact, both of them yesterday. I am now down two cars. So I am down to single digit number of projects, not counting my house that I am trying to work my way through. So the Mercedes left uh yesterday <gasps> yeah it was yeah. sad chris is crying i know a little bit mm -hmm. uh where and, to, where to go how tragic is the new owner? um it, it well it, it 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 went to copart so <laughs> hopefully someone will wow. find it and be able to wow. use it to keep her amg on the road and the oh. night the the uh covid project 914 that i got uh is now gone Good. So I'm down to two non-running vehicle. Well, three non-running really? projects <laughs> and, uh, and, and nine total vehicle projects that I can now keep working on paring down. That's a lot. It I is. I it was that bad. It was. <laughs> oh, it is still. Yes. It's better. Yeah. It's, it's better. Still Just, not yeah. great. No. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations i suppose but in, in just a few months everything Good. that is parked in my driveway will be legally registered insured in my name and running okay let's i challenge look you. forward to that day i that? i i'm <laughs> confident you're going to do that that's good for you yes uh you guys had a much better weekend than we i did absolutely did please yeah Go ahead. Well, all right. I'll go because I got the boring stuff because I wasn't doing all of the work that you're doing. Boring stuff? I, Are you kidding? The one that I, I was so jealous that you got to go. I actually would have given up racing to go see that show. Uh, so, well, we did a whole lot. It, it, it rained and poured from Friday night to up oh, still raining. Uh, it's just finished raining and this is Tuesday. So uh, it's been raining nonstop. Very unlike us to have this long. I think we had uh, Ophelia, I think is um, there is a storm that has been just lingering over our house. So it was miserable out. So we decided to just clean everything. So we did a really deep, uh, deep clean upstairs, which is great. And then we went downtown uh, Philadelphia and uh so I went, went out for dinner saw a show uh got an airbnb so we didn't have to drive home uh but we went to go see macklemore and it was awesome that's what i was hoping you would say downtown I, I, it, it, <laughs> no i did not say that but that would have been really good i'm very sorry uh it was great we had a really good time so i kind of got um just mediocre seats that ended up being 
better than average because they were basically like handicap seats. So we were up raised up on we had like a uh, a comfy It was in the back corner, but it was definitely right. like ample room around us. And like I got I was able to get up and do uh not the uh it's uh, and we danced. There's a dance part in the dance, dance and I off, definitely yeah. got up and and did no, and we danced. Dance off is different than we danced. Oh, okay. Uh so we I got up and did the dance because I had I had dancing room. So it was great. Um, yeah, no, we had a good time. And we weren't kind of in the crowd, but we were higher up. So I posted a couple of videos on Facebook, but um, you could see right to the stage. And yeah, we had a great time. It was awesome. Um, so, he, so he still got it, still putting on a great show? Heck yeah. Yeah. That's and awesome. he just came out with a new album. So that's why it was. And some of it was uh, a little slower, but it he didn't play as many songs of that in the show. And there was a thing on Spotify that was called the, the, the set list. So we thought that's what it was. And he played every one of the hits. It was awesome. So yeah, no, we had a really good time and had a really, 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 really so. good time. Yeah. Um, it's part of the song. <laughs> Funny. Um, so now go pop some tags, uh, and the ceiling can't hold us either. So yeah, we had a great time. Chris. That, that's tell- like two concerts I missed. Cause Vicky was here in town during the life is beautiful festival. And she got to go see the killers. Oh, yeah, Sorry. but this one was one of those kind of like random, let's just go, I, I kind of like his songs. Let's just see if he's touring. Yeah, he's coming to Philadelphia. Just buy a couple of tickets. They're, you know, pretty pretty inexpensive. We just figured we'll just go and sit in the back and see what happens. It was great. Anyway, Chris was doing a lot more productive things around here. Yep. I've been standing the deck still, and I will say just go buy a paint sprayer. Just go buy a paint spray. That's, yeah. that's three weeks in a row that the smartest person that we know has given that advice. I feel like, you yeah, know, there's it, a lesson to be learned there. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing how much faster it is. Um, installed a new French door. So between our living room and the deck was a door that uh, had two panels. Oh, but oh, nice. Only, only one of them opened and it opened in. The other one was just fixed. It doesn't make any sense. So now and we they were have... like, they would stick and they were yeah. like, yeah, it, so now we terrible. have pair of the French doors that both open and they open out. So when you open it, it's a very nice, you know, six wide opening to the to the deck. So that's great. Um, but cutting a giant hole in the house, reframing it. Always a fun it out, time. Right. Reframing it out for a new uh new size and fitting it and sealing it and all that stuff. And, you know, important to get it done. Um I mean, uh tonight I started it's cutting. Right, exactly. Tonight I was cutting the siding panels. We're using a uh, hardy fiber cement architectural siding panels that are four by 10 and just cutting them up and to the right size and not using like, you know, like lap strake siding or any of that stuff with the intent that it would be not only look kind of a little more modern, but be easier to install and very durable. I think we're, we're there. The hardest part of the installation is like when you put drywall on, you have to cut the holes for the outlets. That's my, that's the part I hate the most about dread, about putting up the drywall is cutting the holes for the outs because to get it in the right spots it's a pain to get it just right anyway doing that right now um, also got the corvette to auction it is officially up on Haggerty. Yay! it has had two bids now one of which is not someone i know so that's always good <laughs> thank you very much and uh, if anyone wants a corvette Go find it. Although if anyone <clears> listening <throat> to the show wanted a Corvette, they would have already talked to me. And no one I, did. Uh, no I one like, really I like the work that uh, Michael Deeb did on that one. Michael Deeb from Bid Nerds, where Chrissy was on. He uh he's 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 kind of I don't know, brokering. I don't know what the, the term is for that deal. But he I, I like the write up that he gave. Uh, yeah, it was a, a bit of him, a bit of me. And uh yeah, he, he's there one of their specialists. They're they they're auction hosts i guess if you're going to sell something with them they have someone who's like your host to do it to put all that stuff up and do all the paperwork and all that crap so now the link to that is of course on our facebook and we'll have it in the show notes as well because uh you could get a hell of a cool unrestored corvette for not a lot of money yep auction ends next tuesday at 3 50 p.m so (laughs) so we'll have the news of how that goes next week (laughs) Two weeks. Yes. Two weeks. Oh, two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. 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 Yay. Okay. All right. News. Okay, folks. Juliet Bennett Ryla at the Hustle Daily Newsletter just contributed to this one. Now, has anyone who listens to the show ever want to live in a Porsche dealership? 
Just me? <laughs> you do. Okay. All right. Whatever. <laughs> what about a Porsche condo? See, luxury brand properties, which were once just the domain of hotels, are now popping up. And in Miami, they now have the Porsche Design Tower. This is a 132 unit building with residents that start at 4 million and go up to 32 million. It features a Desoveta, which takes cars up to the condo so they can be parked on display. Not really your style. Well, the same uh, developer has the residence by Armani Casa, where Giorgio Armani himself designed the tapestry and chose the furniture. I want to live in that building, but I don't want to live anywhere near anyone who wants to live in that building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> People who live there are basically saying, I just I just have too much money. I don't know what to do with it. I'm going yeah. to find obnoxious ways to waste it. Yep. Yeah. And then I don't want to be, yeah, I don't want to be around those people. You're absolutely right. I just, you know, that's okay. Okay. On a different note, uh, you might think twice before you piss off your tween, or they might take your car and try to run away. A 10-year-old and 11-year-old were stopped while driving alone four hours from their Florida home in an attempt to run away to California, police said. At around 5.30, at 3, excuse me, 3.50 a.m. Thursday, deputies at Alchua County Sheriff's Office spotted a white sedan that had been reported stolen on I-75 south of the city of Alchua. Alchua, whatever it is. Um, Alachua. Alachua, whatever. Yes, right? Uh with the car reported stolen, police connected what they initially thought was a high-risk traffic stop, but they were surprised when a 10-year-old boy, the driver, exited the car, followed as by his 11-year-old sister. Officers learned that the children had been reported missing in Northport, and the stolen vehicle belonged to their mother, the, po the Post states. According to their mother, the girl is upset about having her electronics taken away on Wednesday. Northport Police spokesperson Joshua Taylor said, told USA Today, the mother noticed their car the children, and then some of their clothes were missing around 1125 and notified the police uh, afterwards. Uh, the story continues, which I didn't add on here, is that the mother had to go get another car to go four hours away to go get their kids that stole the car. I forgot that part of the story. <clears throat> yeah. I love that they got four hours from home. Good and then they were getting, oh, and the rest of this article is because I read it all because I thought it was whole. And the giga blasting has begun. Ass and some road sodas. and <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they did that. Uh, but they had gotten off the highway. That's when they got stopped. They were getting back on the highway. Uh, don't piss off your kids because they might take your car. That's Yeah, that's impressive. I, I, I wonder how, like, how much gas money did they have? Did they do the math? Yeah, to just steal the credit card <laughs> they're 10 did they bring the credit card i doubt it they probably were just like let's just get in the car do they realize they, that it uses getting gas? four hours from home is like four that, hours they stop for gas sometime in there no you think they think yeah i think they had to oh well oh no <laughs> all right and Am ambitious good on them yeah seriously i've got even money that says in about eight or nine years we see them at a lemons race or at least one of them yeah <laughs> or on a high-speed chase because they run away again <laughs> or uh, yeah yes. okay uh, yeah. <laughs> i think i think lemons would be a better influence but it took, i mean totally sure high, yeah, it, it is florida they could totally go the high-speed chase That's route it's a thing okay <laughs> americans sure do love a v8 yeah we do the sound the power the history but around here we also like hondas and they've been steadfast through the years and never making a V8, feeling that they could get the power they needed through other methods like high technology, VTech, turbos, hybrids, while using four, five, and six-cylinder engines in their cars. Other power sports and utility engines, Honda's made everything. One, two, three, four, five, six-cylinder stuff, all of, all of that. Sure, they had some race engines that were V8s, V10s, etc., but nothing production more than a 3.7 liter or more uh, than a V6. Well, that era is over. Honda has finally made a production V8. This is a 5 liter, 60 degree design, 10 to 1 compression, but still runs an 87 octane. What? 32 valves, single overhead cam VTEC, starting the launch edition has 350 horsepower. Sounds fantastic, right? What's this for? Is it for the new NSX? No. Are they coming up with an S5000 Roadster? No. How cool would that be? Uh, 
Ridgeline stepping up for towing? No, none of that. This is an outboard motor. The new BF350 is there to keep up with the Joneses, or really the Yamahas and Mercuries, who have outboards uh, commonly over the maximum 250 horsepower that Honda previously offered, all the way up to the Insano Mercury 600 horsepower supercharged V12s. So Honda decided they finally needed a, v a V8 was the way to get the sort of power, necessary displacements, and keeping the appropriate high throttle all day reliability needed for a boat. So good news for those of the 25 plus foot boat. No news for cars. Until it's some V8 you person been... does it. Until some some somebody finds an old <clears throat> ratted out S2000 frame and manages to figure a way to put this thing in it. It's the V8 you've been waiting for. <laughs> that that's, what the, that's, really have. That, that's what the web, the website says. Wow. Yep. Premium power. That's, that's Honda's actually, that's, first That's really V8. impressive. I, I love that you did that. That was straight up there, like in a world kind of voice you had going on there. I like it. Because <laughs> that's what I do in my spare time. <laughs> okay. So flipping to our favorite Guys at Racing Junk, typically you sell sell a house with a realtor. It's listed on places like Zillow. But do you know you can buy a house or sell a house on Racing Junk? Not sure you're going to get a whole lot of traction, but you know that you're going to see it. Oh, you can see an okay house, but it has a separate shop. You might get some extra views. So right next to the listings of the race, race tracks for sale, that's plural. Uh, there are a few houses with land that make race uh, that that you, to, you can make your own racetrack or a separate shop big enough for to house many of your projects. This house is listed at 319. Three bed, two bath can be yours. I suggest you just abandon the house, go for the garage. Uh, but it's one of just amazing, one of a few amazing things you can find when you're looking the racing junk. And if you're gonna looking house. Sarasota. Okay. Beautiful Sarasota. Uh, Florida, I'm out. Just keep I, hide I mean, your car's keys because there's 10 year olds running around. You're right. But if you're going to list something on Racing Junk, make sure you get a pro membership because you're going to get a whole lot of pictures, which is going to be a whole lot of more of views, which you're going to need when you sell shit. On these junk. people didn't. They only have six pictures of a house. I... Think if you're going to sell a house, get the pro membership. And on, you're going to put it on like when you go to the real estate section, there's only like 10 things on there. Most of them are racetracks. And I was like, oh, a house with a shop. There's not so many of them. So you'd think that if you're looking on that place anyway, that you would get a whole lot more pictures because I want to see what's in the shop. Yep. Yep. Oh, God, I was just... Lemons is at the butt having some butt fun. 84 cars, 16 of those are BMWs. Yay. Boring. Uh, 12 Miatas, three Hondas, one Porsche, a Volvo 940, an Elantra, a 79 Buick Skyhawk Special, a Ford Probe, a 77 Cobra. Ooh, that's so nice happy about this one. I, I remember oh. when it got wrecked, and I'm hoping it's the same one because it's the same team name, or they may have found another one. That was my first actual car. Yeah, I'm so geeked. Nice. Uh, 56 Nash Metropolitan, excellent, and a 91 Sterling 827. Love it. <laughs> great, great uh, lineup. And if you're listening to this, A, we need easy ups. We need two easy ups. B, don't, we, we've already started the text thread going. Do not show up without a theme. Swing by, all right, it's the time of year. Swing by a spirit and just grab everyone a mask or something and make something goofy. But it is me, it is Jim Ballman, it is Sean Rogers, and another local that is a judge in training. And we yeah, there's no, we there's have, no, um, no slack there. Come on. No, we have spent a month devising horrible, horrible things to do to cars that show up without a theme. Oh, black's not a theme. That is not a theme. No, it's not. That could be your well, theme. I don't care. <laughs> just roll with it. Make, right? We did that. <laughs> Yes. Pearl Pearl is not a thing. Anyway, uh Champ is at Pit Race. Scared a load of this. 56 cars, 21 of them BMWs. There's no boring. boring. There's boring. Uh, uh 14 boring. Miatas. That has Four. to represent every Miata in Pennsylvania that is not owned by the Wakemans. I mean, they could be coming from Ohio, maybe New York, maybe somewhere south. Uh, so it's fewer than 20 non-BMWs, non-Miatas, just putting that in. Four Hondas, seven Porsches. I mean, that's basically it. There's a Saturn SC2. 
not sure what that cool. is um a camaro a mustang and that's like it there's like the, no, the there's, there was like their second generation sport coupe okay the well the that's cool, cool. literally the amount of interesting things that are happening at champ <laughs> at pit race there is nothing interesting going on there boo, boo is right okay where's the results all right colonel in the sinkhole <clears throat> the overall winner was the uh, Camo Camry. They were in a 99 Camry. It's a, a group. They used to be TMNT. It TMMI was the, uh, or something like that. That. Toyota the, the, motor you know, the Toyota. manufacturing. And, and yes, they're Toyota engineers and they're driving like an old Camry, but they are invisible on the track. That's part of the reason they have the camo. Aaron Cole once complained that he can't get a good picture of them uh, just because they're quick. They, they make clean passes. No one ever sees them. Their pit stops are orchestrated and quick. They're probably, I think every one of their pit stops, they're out of there in less than three minutes. They earned it. It's a, it's, it's a well-run team and everybody likes them. They even brought another uh, Avalon this year, uh, also done up in, uh, it, it was done in the TRD. Class B, which is, you know, the bad, that was the Red Balls Racing in a 2008 Saab 9.3. Now that car has previously, I believe, won Class C, but it's had some frustrations. Once at NOLA, it lost its wheel. Um, it rolls over a lot. This is not a highly modified Saab. They just, again, they just drive well and drive clean and go out there and turn good laps. And winter Class C was the Project Mercure Sprays program in a 1989 Mercure xr4 ti which technically was an xr8 ti because they've got a carbureted 302 in there i was actually scheduled to drive that car but they had so many black flags they couldn't get me in it before my stint in the miata wow that's and exciting and judge shelley called me to come down there and threaten them with horrible horrible things if they got one more black flag which is not like this team that was just so out of their what the how they normally run and uh, uh, Mike, they they went and did their once over that night, and they found uh, several loose suspension bolts. So they believe their entire rear subframe was moving around, causing them some control issues. Uh, and then they uh, they got it together and they pulled it off, winning Class C. So that is that was probably one of the hardest fought Class C wins I've seen in a very long time. So they really really did it. Org choice was ZR ONB ODB uh, in one of the five Chevy Corvettes. They're out of Salt Lake, Utah. Uh, some surprisingly quick C4s. The heroic fix was Crash 670 and a 94 Toyota Celica. I believe they had to drive. They were they were going to throw in the towel and then they drove four hours to go get an engine. It, it, it was it was impressive. Uh, judge's choice was the Team Blue Flag Racing in a 2006 Mini Cooper out of Sterling Heights. And the reason they were the judge's choice is they also had a weak theme and judge Shelley judging this race has no tolerance for weak themes. So when she threatened them with this, what did they, what was their theme? Their theme was judge Shelley. She was on the hood of their car. They had stickers made up with her and her favorite. Cause she always has her nails done in all of the different flags for each race. Cause she sits on the SCCA chair. Um, she was, uh, both very flattered and a little disturbed, which is perfect for a bribe if you're doing it directly to a judge. Um, I got screwed was the Matata, the 2000 Miata, which is obviously the opposite of the heroic fix. And uh, your Ford Maverick presented by Firefest, the Mav Rex, and a 73 Ford Maverick, which was actually on a C4 or a C5 Corvette. So here's this ugly, rusty, horrible looking uh, Maverick that is setting fastest lap of the race. It just kept sailing by you on that one. The Yokohama Road Mangler Cup was the uh, 140, the 1993 Mercedes 600, the Cleverly Hillbillies. They're always a hoot. Halloween meets gasoline. Now they have now done this on both coasts. Their inaugural race a few years ago was at Thunder Hill. And they had their 2000 Chevy Camaro painted up like a cop car. Half their team was dressed like cops. Half of them were dressed as criminals in orange jumpsuits. And they kept getting into gunfights in, in the uh, paddock area with their Nerf guns. And this time they decided to turn themselves into hippies. They had a mobile VW bus stand. They walked it through the paddock. They had a great... Um, pit vehicle they had guess the flavor cotton candy they were getting out to everyone they were in costume all weekend they really just threw themselves at it they have so much fun they're always great out there 
So congrats to them. And finally, your IOE was this dog won't hunt in a 1982 Celica Supra. And I know you're thinking, what? That's why you ruin classic, which usually helps, especially with an IOE. This thing was rolling over so far. It was scraping its door handles in every corner. And they just kept going out there and trucking with it. And they just did the most with the least. It was not quick. It was didn't handle well. They just kept turning laps. It was a everything you expect unusually pleasant weather for Kentucky didn't rain wasn't morbidly hot just a just a great weekend with a lot of really great competitors had a great time if you haven't ever been to Corvette Museum if you like Barber you should give NCM a try it's not quite as good but it's the same style track in the rhythmic layout there's no place where you're feeling kind of compressed for time but no place where you can take a break but you just find yourself getting in the zone if you watch video of it, you will be lost in about three turns. <laughs> Before we went for uh, one lap, we started watching videos and I was like, which direction am I even going right now? Like I had, I, it was hard to watch video of it. So to get idea of, cause it kind of almost kind of crosses, it doesn't actually cross back on each other, itself, but it wraps within itself. So you're going, you, you're, you're like, basically you go on a big swing on the outside then you come back in their infield basically so uh it's it's a little bit difficult to figure out where you are lots of things lots of turns to to learn yeah and some good off camber hills that kind of force you to engage with you and your car so you can't be on autopilot yeah it's super fun track did they Uh, have sinkhole did you race the sinkhole absolutely full course did we uh the only time I think they ever did that short track was when the three of us were there with Hamsa. And then mm-hmm. ever since yeah. then, they've gotten the full yeah. course. Good, good, good. That's great. Yeah, I wasn't sure because we are. Yeah, single is we fun to do. Yeah, it is. Uh, not on a Razor scooter. Terrifying. I mean, most things are re- terrifying on a Razor scooter, but that was very terrifying on a Razor scooter. Anyway, we're not. Okay, in response to our last episode, Ashley D said that was a great episode. Did any buy the URL for bonerpills.com yet? LOL. I I, I don't should. know. I think we kept looking for it. Oh. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Chris G has a hypothesis for a news and notes follow up. Providence, Rhode Island leads the country in ticketing because of an alarming number of speed and red light cameras. Yep. And uh, that is. Most of those are actually done by private companies. They come in there and say, oh, we'll increase your revenue by this much. We just need to install these cameras and then we'll take over the programming of all that. And we just collect the tickets and we'll send you the cash. And the first thing every one of those companies do, reduce the uh, time for a yellow light to almost force people into running red lights. And historically, not a single one of them has ever made the roads safer. I did not know all of that. Yeah, Is Colorado. That real Springs or are you making that. that up? No, Colorado Springs had that problem when I lived out there. They hired a company. They installed red light cameras. The first thing they did, they started uh, dropping to everybody. The city was in an uproar. The officials realized they were doing nothing to make it safer. Said, "Take it all out. We're done here." And they went mm. back to a, a more reasonable yellow light. Uh, and on the YouTube's, Anton, I'm so happy Anton listened to an episode. Granted, we had to get Jeff Hank on there, but Anton reminded us that the <laughs> best Corvette finish was third overall in a C3. And I believe that was a true C3 in Seattle a few years ago up at the Ridge. Okay. Excellent. That's you know whose Corvette is best Corvette? All right. Either that joke was so funny that my f- co-hosts are paralyzed with laughter or we giga blast it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure yep. you giga blasted, but okay. <laughs> Start over again. Do you know whose Corvette is best Corvette? Uh, Mine. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she has. Mine a was one of 42 made on a Thursday in March of 1984 in red with Z51 package <laughs> and the four plus three transmission, but not the sports seats. True. Which is why you should buy that car. You're you're not going to have sure. a collectible Corvette, but you're going to have a great car to take down to Cars and Coffee or go get ice cream in. And it's always going to have a good story behind it. And you won't feel bad about driving it because it's unmolested and unrestored. It's cool low car. mileage, though. It is low mileage. Anyway. Incredibly low mileage. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Matt, hi, so you want to you want to talk about this show? Because uh, this is your idea. All right. So uh, we have in here, it's it's the 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 concept how to not get in over your head but at the same time 
I, I wanted to talk about the, the idea of getting out of your comfort zone in cars, uh, to that end. So it's the intersection of two things. One was the demise of the AMG. Now, ultimately I feel terrible about the AMG because I loved that car. I did. It was a great car and I wish I could have kept it going, but I had reached a point of very diminishing returns. And even after spending a small fortune on that, I was going to end up with a 180,000 mile, uh, 15 year old high end Mercedes. Uh, and as I am wrestling with this, uh, a thread showed up on Reddit in the Miata forums. And it was a young girl. She said, 22 year old gamer girl who's never owned more than a screwdriver to assemble a desk. She was looking at in a Miata. She had just saw one, fell in love with it, talked to the owner and decided to start doing some research on there. And what was nice about that is the Miata community was very supportive. Hey, avoid this, do this, look at this kind of a deal. She already had a reliable car. So she was willing to invest and learn in this. And I put me back in the mindset of the AMG effectively. Chris gave me such a deal on that car that I drove the fastest production vehicle or pr fastest production sedan available that year for three and a half years for the cost of about $11,000 when it's all said and done, if I don't add in the tires that I tended to replace every year, but that's all on me. And the only real problem it ever gave me aside from the last one was the front air shocks went out, which scares a lot of people. And it scared me too. And I ended up repairing those myself over the course of two days and learned a skill in the course of which, and it actually turned out to be a lot cheaper than everything on the internet tells you to do. So you have these Icarus cars. Are you going to fly too close to the sun? Our friend Hamsa loves to say that you should, if you've got the time and you don't need it done by a, a certain timeline, you should try to do everything yourself because worst case, you learn how not to do something, but a lot of times you pick up a skill. So if you're looking at these vehicles and I, I brought this up to Chris and Chrissy because they have bought some just God awful cars and learned a lot. The, the sit, the Citroen, the, the, the rolls. I mean, up on your bingo card. <laughs> so I wanted, I wanted the point of view of people who are smart and do their research and uh, you know, what their considerations are versus people like me and Jeff. And my point when I was making this argument to my co-host was in this hobby and in our audience, there's probably a lot more mentals and Jeff's than there are Chris's and Chrissy's, but that doesn't mean that your wisdom can't help our listeners. If they're looking at a really bad idea about managing their expectations and what they're going to get out of it, aside from just vehicle ownership and frustration and greasy fingernails. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that intro was not written in our notes. No, sorry. My, from <laughs> my job has been no. sucking high really, really much lately. And I did not have an opportunity. No, to no, no. It was go. great. No, it was so I like great. It when it's I like it too. Time. No, yes. no. That's why I, it's great. I yeah. just noting how well, that it's great. Yeah. We have fortunately not gotten buried by anything that we've had. Mm. Uh, not, not that there's not suggestions that I've made that you have been their voice of reason that we have not gotten buried and vice versa. And, or we've thought and talked a lot about it to decide sure. what is the right choice, but to, to some, some bad idea cars that were potentially bad idea cars that we have at least seriously considered purchasing or include things like um, supercharged Range Rovers, Lotus Avoras, Aston Martin V12s, um, Porsche Turbos. Uh, I'm to think what I mean, a whole variety of assorted Porsches. Um, yeah, uh, Corvettes, M3s. You know, and things that we've oh we have owned six we've had a lot of things successfully. Oh, Chrissy, you were saying something. I was gonna well, I was was wondering if we were gonna add the discussion of the Mercedes purchase into this discussion. Sure. Well, I, I think so. Well, it's and it's but that's saying we have here's some cars we've that are potentially problems that we've owned, I'll say, with, with varying levels of success, include the Citroen and the Rolls, but also the the CLS sixty three. 
um, the NSX, the Z4M, my M3 before that. You know, there's been a lot of, you know, these, these are not just Accords. And the 99 Land Rover. Right. Land Rover Discovery. Right. Exactly. I don't know which house that fits in though. Like, <laughs> oh, that was great for me. It just, it just, the air suspension didn't like you. When you would drive it, it would just squat one, one wheel. Uh, it had plenty of other issues. We're not, we shouldn't make it sound like it's a great it was, car. Hey, we've said it before. It's like the really nice, happy, loyal dog that has seizures and pees in the car. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that that's what that car is like uh, didn't make you like it any less you just all <laughs> i know and, and, you know it, to this to this day uh i i i they catch my eye on facebook marketplace and if vicky stands behind me she'll go oh disco we have one right. that is um in a uh, that's parked like basically on the highway that we come by like all the time i'm pretty sure i saw yeah. you looking at it yesterday when it's it's an 03 hse which has the incredibly rare accessory roof rack crossbars. I don't know why the crossbars are like, they don't exist. I looked for Who them for years up? and years Who and years. This? And this one has it up because I looked for them for years and I could never find them. Well, there's one <laughs> in our neighbor as like a neighbor. So there's that. I know. There you go. Yes. All right. Um, so let's think about like what, how did we get to the point of making I guess the right choices and thinking about it through and, and a mo a, recent example that we had is when we were getting Chrissy's current Mercedes, the E400 wagon. We were having a real debate. Do we get the newest generation E400, non-AMG, or do we go for the previous generation E63S wagon? And knowing that we were not going to spend the, at the time, $80,000 minimum that it was going to take to get a current generation E63. That was just that's dumb. So uh, in that particular case, we had to decide between good enough and bonkers, but you know, the newer one had a much nicer interior. It was gorgeous. Uh, and so we, so I made a spreadsheet. It's dumb, but I'd say, let's see how much, how much do we want this? So it's things like, all right, what are the tires going to be? Cause they, you know, different, different size tires are cost differently. They're going to wear out more quickly. All right. What's that cost difference? Yes. Mental. And I want to throw in there because, you know, you say spreadsheet and I can hear certain people rolling their eyes, but that spreadsheet isn't just about money. It is about emotional impact. And just, you know, is it grabbing that little feels deep in your cockles of your heart? Mm -hmm. it, it, at the end of it, you could say, all right, that's an amount I can live with for the amount of difference that I want. Right. And then it was, yes. all right, what's the realistic fuel economy going to be? This is a car we're probably going to drive a, a fair amount. So she did what's like that going to cost us? I think right. you did yep. an annual. annual. And yep, I did. And versus what it would be for the different fuel economies for the car. Um, I looked at things like um, brake. I looked at brake pattern rotor costs as a, an exemplar of the maintenance items that would need to be replaced. And as Mental knows, the CLS with the performance package has some pretty hefty bills for brakes if you don't do it quite right. So looked at all. So I put up together a bunch of things that would say, what's, what's a realistic cost of ownership for a hundred thousand miles for each one of these, just as running costs, not as purchase costs. And it was significantly less for the E400. And we liked the, the car itself better, but it just, it wasn't as crazy fun as the CLS. But then we also said, the CLS is so much like it's, it's, that's what makes it so cool. But we don't need that. Like, yes, it's hilarious. The first time you boot that car, when you got a straight road in front of you, you just giggle. Like, you but how many it. times do we actually hit the button under the oh, full pedal? Never, right, because like, you never needed it. Most days yeah. I'm driving around, the car shifting at like 2,300 RPM, just loafing along with that giant engine, still getting 18 miles to a gallon doing it, even though I'm driving it like an old man because I'm just driving to work. What do I need? Yeah. If, I, if I hit the gas on the roads that I'm driving on, I am multiples of the speed limit in seconds. But that 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 point it your your giggle because everyone that drove that car had the same reaction. They would, you know, 
find some open space. I'd be like, oh, you're going to need a little more open space than that. And they would go down there until they felt the button. And then they would be like, oh, my God. Uh-huh. But then you do that. Well, I mean, for for roads around us, we we don't have enough roads for us to be able to do that. So you're like, cool, I hit the button and then I have to back off because somebody's going the speed limit in the left lane. So, I mean, like yeah, yeah. we you, we we never had the opportunity I mean, on track. Cool. Right. Maybe near roads that you, you can go find a road not too far away to be able to take that uh and and actually get it to the full speed but we just didn't have that kind of opportunity so you know it's there you want to speed you also kind of just wanted to be an ass i just wanted to go faster and i'm like this car can go fast you know what kind of car i'm in i said this to people um and then they couldn't hear me but i i so you know, like I don't need to be that way because I'm chances are going to pass somebody and then I have to stop. So I like, don't. Yeah. So we just, this, we said it would be awesome. This was a perfect environment for that car. Cause there were any number of times when I could just absolutely crack the taps on that one. Oh yeah. It, it was perfect. It's designed to cross continents and you were able to cross the continent right. north and south with it and do a lot of distant stuff and you arrive refreshed now. So it was great for that. And, and even, you know, it's just some of the nice sporting roads around here. I, you know, I run out with the North uh, Porsche guys. And, and you can keep up. Yeah. It, you know, and I, not only could I keep up, I could get around a couple of them mm-hmm. and, you yeah. know, like, you know, we'd, we'd pull in for our little mid stops and they'd be like, how much that thing weigh? And I, you know, kind of, uh, 6,000 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, it's, it's within a few hundred pounds of a regular suburban and they would go, dear God, that, and it, it just, it stuck, it turned. So you, where you live, not just how you want to drive is what I'm hearing, but how you are really able to drive. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then make the decision. Yeah. So, yeah. It's that's part of you need to be realistic with yourself about your purchase. And so it's things uh, like the the Porsche that I'm babysitting right now Mm -hmm. is actually going up for sale. And the owner has realized that it's it's an it's an appreciating asset that they are no longer comfortable with just having sit. And one of their points is the good roads are all an hour away. Mm. Mm-hmm. But I mean, just just to finish your conversation, if I can do that on the Mercedes, yeah. back to back to the spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet yeah. gave. So we looked at three. I want to say three different ones. We kind of narrowed down what we want: the AMG version, the version, the E four hundred that I have, uh, and then we had like an older version. Yeah, E three fifty, last version too. Right, right. So you have these numbers at the end of the road, and you kind of compare them, and then we say, well, that one's astronomical. Which one do we want? And it could have been that we said the AMG version or whatever the third line of that was that it was worth it to be able to say, I know this is going to cost me more, but it's worth it to me because I want it for these different reasons, or it was more comfortable, or was I think it's prettier. You know, a lot of it was I I would wanted to be able to walk away and say that is a beautiful car and so and and the versions that we were looking at are a little bit different so um you know the things like that you could that's where back to mental's point of like you have this there's not necessarily a, you don't put the number to it but there's a there's a feeling about it of what makes it worth it to even if you know that the cost is is potentially going to be more but the spreadsheet really kind of made it so that it put a number to all of the different versions on it and you can you we could override and say yes the most expensive version is going to be the best option for us for whatever reason um but you kind of have to pick and choose from there but it was like a really good tangible number to be able to put to it whether we drove more or drove less and when we bought it COVID the day we bought it to the week after we bought it COVID hit so um we oh, didn't know around. we bought it a week into COVID we bought hit, it so we got it for a steal all right but we bought it and then COVID hit no yes other way no we bought it in April mid-April of 20 and the dealer was basically just like, I don't want anything. Right. Because we were looking for cars when they were shutting around. down. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Okay. That was a long time ago. Either way. So um, we didn't drive as much as we thought we were going to. So there's that. Uh, but um, at least it's an it's a, a estimated number of what you think is going to happen. And <clears throat> I'm glad you guys said that. Now, I just want to throw this out there. Depending where you are on the economic scale of looking for this, your next entertainment vehicle, modern transportation and the networks that are out there 
consider casting a bigger net. It's no longer just show up at someone's house with a wad full of hundred dollar bills and then start lowballing them and kick the tires and drive away with a car. I bought the CLS from Chris and Chrissy cheating because I'd purchased a car from them before and it was a wonderful experience. And he told me everything he did to the car. So I knew what I was getting, but I had it shipped. And this was before COVID. I had it shipped here. We had just bought the house. It got here in 2019. No, it showed up right after the first of the year. It was just after the holidays. Also right before COVID hit. Um, but it was uh, just, I want to say $600 to have that vehicle brought here in two days, which I don't think even in that car, unless I really wanted to just pound Red Bulls and, and taunt the law, I could have done myself. The car the, the car was shipped here and you bought yours nowhere near ours your came, current zip code. Yeah, ours came from the Fresno, California area. So that, uh, yeah, it, uh, it showed up three days later. I think it was 900 bucks and okay, that's fine. And I said to the guy in the truck when I got, it, he was like, wow, you made good time. And he's like, yeah, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> that's all he said. And, and um, there, there but, are any number of dealers that'll include that in the cost of the car. No, yeah. we'll have it shipped to your it's, door. It's a, probably a little more now with current fuel costs than when we're talking, but still. Uh, so I guess the whole point of the whole spreadsheet thing is go into it with your eyes open. It's yes, it, you might be making a bad choice, but if you're making an informed bad choice, then I think it's, Oh, not I a like bad that. That is a, that is a good way to put it. Like that. <laughs> that could, that should be the tagline for the show, for the show. Everyone racers make an informed bad choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need an informed bad choice. It's like, so here's some things to think about that I think have helped us get into the right bad choices and avoid some of the wrong ones. Um, be real with yourself about how this car is going to fit in your life. Yes, it's cool. Yes, I want it. Isn't that great? I can afford it. It's there. All right. But now what? Now what am I going to do when I have it? Do I have a place to put it? Do How does it pair with the other vehicles in my life? How does, it, how do I, does the timeline fit in my life? Like, is Does this work? There are lots of cars where I said, yeah, that's cool. I'd like to have that. What am I going to do? Like Bill was going to sell his ND2 Miata that's already got conies at a roll bar and stuff. I'm like, yeah, that would be wonderful. What am I going to do with it? Right. Like, sure, that'd be great. I'd love to have it. Let's drive around. That'd be fun. But why? We put 1,800 miles in the NSX this year. Obviously, don't really need another two-seat convertible. Like the Corvette didn't get driven. I didn't even get through a whole tank of gas in the Corvette this year because it just I don't have a need for it. Um, Meanwhile, my my Miata that it was purchased with twenty seven thousand miles less than a year ago, I'm about to hit forty thousand miles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, uh, research. Got a stupid bug here. Mosquito. Anyway, um, research and find figure stuff out ahead of time. And these are the kind of things you need to think about. What is the cost? To, you know, what are the costs to realistically own this car? We just talked about that. What is the repair time and complexity? And you can say, yes, this isn't that expensive to repair, but oh, that is a, like, for example, the clutch on the Aston Martin uh, V8 Vantage. I really wanted a V8 Vantage. The clutch is, doesn't last that long. And you know what? You're basically dropping the whole middle out of the car onto like work tables. That's kind of the way Aston Martin does it. That's a big complexity. Um, all the Ferraris after the 328, are engine out services. They're not particularly hard. They're not particularly you know expensive for the parts if you're doing it yourself, but that's a lot of complexity and time and space to be pulling that engine out every several years to change the belts and stuff. Yeah. If you if you live in a condo with a single parking spot. Right. Even in our you know suburban two car garage, that would be a big deal to to do that. Uh, parts availability is important. See what, what parts are actually out there, what ones you cannot get and what ones are going to make you cringe for prices. Like for example, the brake rotors on the P30 package CLS, they were not kidding a thousand dollars each until they started using them on the AMG GT. Which, and then they, and I, and I did know that when better. I purchased it and you told me by the way, <laughs> yep. cause the, uh, the big mod was to swap it out with the Audis, which were more affordable. 
But then once they made put the same breaks on the AMG GT, then suddenly the price became four hundred dollars, which is still a lot, but it is, you know, within the realm of acceptable, right? Yeah, yeah. But four thousand dollars is a car, at. not a brake job. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, look, find out what parts are. Like um, other examples that we've had, the the parts for the rolls were kind of a pain to get, and they're all kind of expensive. And some of the Rolls Royce junkyards weren't real thrilled with what i was doing with that car so i stopped telling them <laughs> well some um, people did think it was funny and then yes and, and then we ran out of those people and then everybody yes. else did not think which we is, were funny. some did not which is interesting because soggy and randy talked about having the same problem with the simca yeah <laughs> yeah um, the either, either they thought it was hilarious or they hated them and wouldn't sell them anything yeah the citroen I had a actually it seemed to have a very supportive community of like four people. That's what it was. And there's only so much they can do, but there were definitely a lot of parts that were either unobtainium or might as well have been like the the Marshall dual coil distributor cap was six hundred dollars. But fortunately, there's a guy that figured out, oh, I can make this little adapter and we'll put a Buick. Buick odd fired, you know, 231 distributor on, cap on it and with a Petronix and it only costs you know, $200. Great. We'll do that. Uh, someone else figured out how to fit a Ford voltage regulator from a van into the thing instead of the, the CB one. And that was not kidding. 15 bucks. If you knew how to hook it up, which wasn't very hard. So that, that having that community helped to get the parts and the spares, but I'd be worried about stuff that was made for a limited time. And in limited areas, like for example, the other day, I, I had to exercise my own judgment. In Western Pennsylvania, there was a, a 91 Lotus Elan, M100 Lotus Elan, that was in rough shape, but it was that was three the uh, the the Isuzu GM yeah. front wheel drive. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's but, strong constitution to resist that, right? That with a case swap super cool and fun, right? We didn't even have a conversation about no, this. No, because I had the decision. I don't have a space for it. I don't have room for it. I don't have time for it. And it's not going to happen. So I'm not but, even going to try and sell it to Chrissy because right. I know that won't work. I I looked at it. You know, the, the mental gears went and I said, no, it's not going to happen. So the, the only reason I knew about it. Because I said, look, look at this. I can't need to see it. Right. Um. <laughs> Because it was on Facebook and it wasn't. It was on Facebook through. and he's not on Facebook. But, so he's like, I'm going to send you this. Can I just need to look at it? Right. Okay. And it's another reason I didn't really push higher than that TVR deal. I don't have the room for it, don't have a place for it. And talk about parts wasn't availability it two problems. TVRs? It was three it was, TVR it was, tasks. It was three. And and if if I went through the exact same process, I don't have a place for it. I'm trying to pare down my vehicles, but the emotional idea of just owning a cheap TVR, knowing the ultimate demise of that car was going to be leaving here on the back of a rollback going to the junkyard for the price those were offered. Had one of you fallen, I was going to do it. If if one person had said, okay, I'm in for this much, I was going to end up with a TVR. So I'm I'm glad all of you have stronger wills than I do. You of all people about, do not need this. No, but I mean, that could have been a <laughs> no. good, that could have been a new IOE, could have been a good IOE car for Greg and Bruce and Darren, you know, enough there. They're Especially with that the, way, yeah, take example. the TR drivetrain out of there and put it yeah. into that. Oof. Would have been great. But talk about parts availability issues. When you need a control arm for your TVR 280i, <laughs> you're basically making it or talking to a guy named Nigel in, you know, Northamptonshire about who find, at the, maybe who finding worked at the plant. Right. It's not like our Mazda three. Okay. I'll call rock. Auto, I'll have one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. like, you, you have to consider, can you handle the kind of parts availability this car might have? Like, this is actually kind of a problem with the NSX. There's some stuff that is Honda. getting very hard to find. And some stuff is very expensive. Like for the new windshield was $2,400 for the part. And it's only from Honda and they have to make batches now and then, and that's it. And that's tough. Can you handle the car being out of commission for a while waiting for specialty parts? Can you handle the price of specialty parts? Yep. 
Um, other resources like these cars can challenge you. We talked about the space resources of repair complexity and stuff, but are there, are there knowledge resources? The kind of people we are, we're probably not just going to bring it to the specialty mechanic who charges $300 an hour on these things. We're going to try to do a lot of these things ourselves. Can we get the, the, the guidebooks, the torque specs, the repair specs, anything? Can you, is your, that available? Your roles came with the, Shot five, not kidding a five volume set in three ring binders that took up an entire copy box and the roll standards for repairs at the time where they would even when, when you want we're going to pull the engine out they'd okay fine they'd have to you said you have to put the car in a cradle and here is the dimensions and the specs for how to build the cradle out of lumber and they'd give you the instructions on on, on the lumber building for the cradle as part of the preparation for pulling the engine. And and that's that, why it was that. that. And that's what that was. How you, you find that on eBay, how much is it was. I want to oh, say the price I'm sure of the hundreds of dollars. Yes. Yeah. It was probably, we probably paid a thousand dollars for that car. So yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. It went with I, the car because it was too yeah. good not to put with the car. Uh, years ago when I had the 928, someone actually scanned a PDF of the same equivalent for the Porsche 928, the $700. Because I did look on eBay for one of those and people were selling the 10 volume, three ring binders of a Porsche 928 repair manual. And it was absurdly priced. Uh, but luckily, uh, Charles, who runs with Steph down in Texas, had a PDF copy and it was available for this much. And uh, <laughs> I, I did, I, I but downloaded- But you didn't have the ring binder set though. Oh, <laughs> But if I was willing to abuse enough government resources and print it, because <laughs> I did actually, I did print out the you could one. Make your it was, own. It was, I, I still have it in the garage. It was this oh, thick and it was funny. the, um, just the, the table of contents that told you what volume to go look in. Good. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I knew where I would go on the PDF. Oh. But the, okay. the, uh, it, but you you do you compare because the nine twenty eight they sold a lot of those so that community is out there and they've made those resources available and people like to share them I don't know what the Rolls community was like um, but the Rolls community you, can barely operate a computer for the most part. <laughs> as you do start getting into more esoteric and specialty cars you will find people that will be like um, no you're not restoring this to a concourse standard hence I'm going to give you no help at all. Because the only answer is to have it built exactly like the factory. And other communities would be like, yeah, yeah, Ford voltage regulator, you twist two wires, really easy. Yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you a video on my phone. Mm -hmm. yeah, and some cars have wonderful DIY resources like Miatas, you know, and, and Miatas Hondas, the, the like second generation Priuses have been fully embraced by geeks to figure out how to do stuff and are posting, you know, sharing how to do it you know everyone used to be like oh oh no the hybrid the hybrid it's going i can't not fix it now like there's apps specifically for prius to measure the health cell health of each battery in the pack to figure out what's where how is it where's the problem what's going on and it you know that that's the kind of resource that's available for those kind of cars that's not available for the citroen sm i had to what the only way i could get resources for that is i had to use the internet wayback machine and because I knew that there had been a web a, a website that had existed with those things and enough working, scrounging way back machine of that website, I was able to find and copy enough resources out of there for the pro parts of the problems that I had. But uh, that's, you know, that's the extreme of not, not having the resources. And it's, uh, it takes a lot more time. Indeed. Yeah. Um, Indeed. Uh, I like the thing you have here in space. And if I'm jumping ahead, tell me to shut up. No, please. That's, that's great. Um, Cause it's not just, you know, I, I live in the desert and I say this all the time. Oh, I got space. I got tons of space. I yeah. can store, I can store. All I have eight acres. Let me just I throw the how one many moon acre. Trailers do you want? How exactly. many moon trailers? That's valid. <laughs> but do you have the space to even upkeep the vehicle? Now the Mercedes fit in my garage. And I have a two car garage, but if the Mercedes came into the garage and it needed repair, that's the only thing that's going in there. And you were going to make some adjustments to get that garage door closed uh, after, you know, while you were, after you were done working on there and, and, and knowing that that was going to be a couple of days. 
So you may have space for the vehicle. Um, and when I was trying to diagnose it, someone had a CLS 6.3 and they were actually uh, doing some substantial work that required the engine to come out. And they were doing this in the in their uh, garage, one car garage of their condo. But you had to lift the car up to pull the front cradle out and move it forward. And then he had to prep that vehicle to make it look like it didn't just sit there without an engine in it because the engine and transmission combo were taking up his entire garage. So mm -hmm. think about the level of complexity on, especially on some of the more common problems that make some of these Icarus and halo cars um, achievable by a do it yourselfer is it's the, the neglected maintenance or something of that, of that nature that you're going to have to be able to do yourself. You're going to need a giant table. You're going to need an engine crane. You're going to need space to take apart a six liter engine and then fit it all back together. And you're not going to do this in a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, yeah. Or a week, or, I mean, maybe if you're not working at all or something that you have a lot of time, then maybe you will, but probably not. So it's like a good point. the engine out service in a Ferrari. You can say, oh, that cheap, that cheap 355. Mm, that sounds like it might be interesting. And then you figure out, oh, no, it's engine out service for everything. The exhaust mail stores are probably cracked and they're $2,000 each. Every single button in the interior is going to be sticky and all the Talk about wipe scope off of creep, them. right? BF1 the F1 shift thing is going to be broken. Like I looked, I looked hard at those too because I made a yellow 355 spider. Hell How cool yeah. would that be? Right? Yeah. Seriously. But right. it didn't fit in our scope of acceptableness for all of these criteria. So that's why we have a Honda. And we'll link this in there. We've talked about it before and it was linked in previous show notes, but a, a great thread for that is the uh, unicorn of my destruction thread on the GRM forum about the mm -hmm. guy that brought the R63 minivan. Mm hmm. Uh, they made less than 500 of them. It was the engine in the CLS, but it was done in a minivan. And, uh, and before anyone just, you know, go ahead and goes, Oh, the problem with your Mercedes was the head bolts. It was not the head bolts because the previous owner took the time to do every one of the head bolts and the hydraulic lifters, which had that gone to a dealer or, a, a, even a decent independent shop. How much is that work, Chris? How much would several, that have cost? Several thousand dollars, several thousand dollars. And it required a specialty tool which I mm -hmm. still have if you want it back. Uh, <laughs> when am I going to do it again? Yeah, why, why am I, gonna, I don't need that. But um, so, you know, uh, knowing that that was done uh, and, and you are, you, you once paid your rent as a professional wrench. So you, you felt that while there was nothing too cosmic, it was a specialty tool. It was something that you could do and it was bell within the reason it still took you, I want to say two weeks yeah, I did it a while piece by piece. Here just and, and, you know, and that literally was just replacing Wasn't head bolts rush. while the engine was still in the car. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah. If you're looking at anything this dumb and you don't have another means of transportation or a reliable mm -hmm. subway or, mm -hmm. or bus or something like that, or even a scooter, just no, stop. As stop long as now. And I also live in a place that you can just rely on a scooter. Like don't that's not many yeah. places. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it comes back to be real with yourself after you check all these things. Mm -hmm. And it, like in our example, the E400 has been a great choice at a wonderful car. Yeah, it doesn't Fantastic. it's not ballistic like the other one, but it's still faster than it absolutely than it needs to be in any way. And, and super nice comfortable. and comfortable. Right. And like, it's a wonderful like I, yeah, daily I, driver. I, I, yeah, I've been in houses that aren't as comfortable as that. I do. I <laughs> I remember when I drove all night to do the 24 hour race and I was looking a little haggard and Chrissy said, go sit in the car and turn on the refreshing massage. And it, it like worked. changed your I mean, life. The, no, it did. I, like, I, I got out and I'm like, yeah, I'm feeling this. Okay. This is, this yeah. is awesome. So, it, you know, I, so much so that when I get in other cars, like our Cadillac, which is lovely still, I'm like, where I need a massage right now. Like, why is this car not helping me? Yeah. The because long trips. I'm like, damn it. Escalade. Where's your massaging seats? Yeah. And, and, you know, luxuries the, once sampled yeah. often become necessities. I forget who <laughs> that quote is from, but it's, it's yeah. apropos. That's good. And like the Mercedes, you know, the CLS uh, would not massage your seats. And whenever I needed to wake up while well, I would just mat the throttle and, Oh, yeah. so you, you, you make, you make your trade-offs and, and, and for, 
for a German car. I like how you keep coming back to that because that car just, it wasn't right. Uh, it, you know, it was, it was a very, I, I'm surprised you guys behaved as well with it. Cause that CLS was so much more my personality of, Oh, laws of physics. Hmm. I, I think not watch this. And it, it was just always so stupid. Cause we couldn't and, drive it stupid. We don't have I, any places I, to I, drive it, stupid. It, I know. It, we bought it. We bought it for one lap and right. it did a great job. On one it was lap. awesome. Like it was, perfect for that yeah we had plenty of highways track, right yes. 140 at road america wonderful all Fine. those great things and then i was driving it to work with the shifting at the 2200 rpm and you know sure i'm comfortable it's cool and yeah and and uh we're gonna we keep talking about mercedes because that was great and that is still the fastest I'm trying to I'm trying to phrase this legally. That you were is in still Mexico. The, yeah, I was in Mexico. <laughs> that is, um, yeah, that is the fastest I have ever been in a licensed, registered, and insured vehicle on a public road, and I mean by a large measure. Um, and with the exception of supercars on a racetrack, faster than just about everything I've driven on a racetrack. Uh, on that one, but I want to talk about like uh, on this one too. Um the 928 debacle. Which, sure. Let's talk about that. Well, and, and we're looking at this where you, you, you have to evaluate and you talk about the be real yourself and we're talking about having an exit or we're going to talk about exit plan and timeline. And this is, this is important. Um, but looking at the entire continuum of the ownership experience on that, you know, what are you getting from this? I'd always wanted a 928 and uh, actually it was one of a handful of cars I'd never driven. And I went Mostly into you just like the pop up, up and down headlights. Oh, totally. Think. And those are good looking ones because they had like the, the, the teardrop at the end of them. But I, I went to look at the car, always having that nagging in the back of my head, always wanting one of those. And at the price it was asked for, I was not going to get the experience I want. And then the person selling it immediately dropped it to a price where I was going to at least get some kind of a positive experience out of that. Uh, and we're, we're, we're talking about high-end cars and, and, and things of that nature, but it also can absolutely be a complete cheap car, something you bought just for a lemons rally or just to drive for a summer because it, it makes you chuckle. The miracle Miata comes to mind. Uh, and cars that, you know, have a very limited time in your life for whatever reason, but you're still going to get the money you paid for it out of it. So I got the 928. And it was for the months that I owned it. It was hilarious. I loved it. I loved that it would not come out of first gear, but it didn't redline until 6,000 RPMs. And I just had this big V8 that I would just drive from stoplight to stoplight, winding it up to about five grand and then bringing it back down. And everyone looked over at me, be like, that guy's having way too much fun driving to work. Yeah. And, you know, I, had the had the fuel system not tried to kill me, I probably still would have that stupid car. Minor details. Minor details. Minor details. Uh, which does bring us to the concept of an exit plan. Um, now, you you guys have bought several vehicles knowing that it exists for this purpose, for this time period, either as race cars, as personal owner cars, uh, the, the Corvette, uh, and, the, and the CLS. When... What are your decisions or your consideration factors on, okay, we're going to have this car until X no longer equals Y or until this calendar period or what, what, uh, what am I missing? It's car more, specific. yeah, it's, it's very car and situation specific. If you're buying it for a task, when the task is over, move it along unless it f just fits in the in life so well that it doesn't make any sense to get rid of it or other pieces move around where that then fits. Um, and a lot of times it's, it's where, what is this car going to need compared to what I want and need? So that's why the Z4 left us as that was a great car, looked great, fast, fun, loved it. It was at 79,000 miles. I knew that at around a hundred thousand, it was going to need it all new rod bearings and it still had the original clutch and things were going to start to get expensive. So I wanted to move it along <laughs> while it still didn't need it and wasn't right on the cusp of needing any of those things that everyone would be worried about it. 
And so that car, we sold for $2,000 less than we paid for it five years and, you know, 50,000 miles before. But it and was if, that and because if you took figure, very good care of it. Yeah. And if you figure had, a car yeah. payment out, like whatever your average car payment is, and you average that over that period of time, you so won on that deal. Oh, yeah. Well, I won on a lot of them. Like this, you know, this the CLS, for example. Sure, I did a fair amount of maintenance, and but very little repairs on that car. I sold, I passed on the good deal that I got it to sell to you. I only paid 18 for it and sold it to you for a little less than that. But I, we had that for four years and 50,000 miles. Like, yeah. And great. I it had adventures I had it for, and fun and that was great. Yeah. I had it for three and a half years and 50,000 miles. And yeah. And, and, and amortize that out. It was cheaper than buying a, a $99 a month uh, Hyundai. Right. <laughs> and then we've got something like the NSX that we, we, the exit, we didn't really have an exit plan as we always wanted one of these. We'll own it until it doesn't make sense or it no longer is amuses us. But it's which I don't know when that's ever going to happen. Right. <laughs> and there's not a car really that's sure. Gone significant. <laughs> I don't. I don't know value. if I want to meet you guys when the NSX. <laughs> it no longer amuses me. But right. I don't like we we talk about it all the time. Like, oh, what if it crashes? And then I'm like, what are we gonna get? Or like, what do we else do we get? Like, we don't. Say, what, need, if it, it does if what it we crashes, need it to do. I feel like the insurance is gonna be like, hello. <laughs> it will, well, but then I have money, and then what am I gonna do? Like, yeah. I don't. What well, one of the reasons we got the NSX instead of the the other one we were close to was a 997 turbo cab was the the close one on that and we said well they, people are going to hate us if we start talking about this well they said well we said they're never going to make any more NSXs but they're always going to make a 911 turbo cab and some so of them don't look get so more, different right. and yeah. anything you we can, fairly we can always easy. get one if, we, if that's the itch we want to scratch in the future, we can get one of those. They, they're they all they're out there. They made them all kinds of different uh, years and generations. My local they're friend there. Rami actually literally did. He just picked up a 997 Turbo Cab uh, six-speed. And he wasn't, he wasn't even looking for one when uh, he, he walked into a dealer about something else. And he just took it around the block and said, this car is way too good. And he just bought it. Yeah. It was a great car. Just we figured... Someday, if we want that, cool. we can get one. But the NSX yeah. is there's there's only one of the first generation NSX, and then it it doesn't have the same kind of evolution the Porsche did. So that's why the NSX made and, more and sense for us. Yes, and financially, for a of reasons. you know the the price of the nine nine seven has done this while your NSX has done, yeah, still going. Nine nine sevens are still doing all right. Actually, be surprised. But anyway, so yeah, all those things together, I think, is how we've had a general success on these. And we don't, our exit plan doesn't include fire sale like yours. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, I have so many cars. I need to get them all gone. Well, and, and all the hoarders will, you know, agree with me on this one. There is, there's a lot, we have a lot of them out there. Right. You know, you, 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 oh, I've got all this time, all this money. Oh, what a great idea. Oh, I'll get to this. I'll get to this and then purge everything. And then, oh, I've got all this empty garage space. <laughs> so this, <laughs> This time At least around, everybody is like okay with this. We're right. I mean, this okay. time around, okay. I've I've tried to be very deliberate and measured. Uh, getting rid of the CLS, it did not come at an easy easy decision, and I I established a line of I'm going to try these things, and if if this, these things do not resolve the issue, it is time for someone else to to move on to that because I don't I'm not getting more time. And, uh, I, I enjoy wrenching, but it also, it, it's harder for me to do as much as I've, I've, you know, I'm traveling and, and seeing friends. And if you listen to our thankfulness episode and our new year's resolutions, it's always less stuff, more experiences. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm making strides in that arena and I'm more about the experiences and less about the stuff. And it was not fitting in with my master plan on that one. Um, I am in a downturn, but I'm deliberately trying to put the brakes on and not do the fire sale aspect of it. Cause yes, th this is how you just end up in that cycle and nothing ever gets fixed. And you end up with so many projects, you have project paralysis cause you've got to move 14 things to work on the one thing. And then you just get sick of it all and get rid of it. So I've been, I've been trying not to 
trying not to do that because you don't get rid of a good thing in a fire sale. And it really negates all of the pointers that you guys are giving about how to responsibly enjoy these kind of halo cars. It's all about how you go into it. If you go into it right for the right reasons, you'll be okay in the end. It's going, you know, usually, you know, but this is also why the MG is still sitting here. But fortunately, that's going to be a front burner product this winter, finally, because we have stopped da, da, da. doing other stopped doing other projects, really. Like we don't have we're not building other race cars this year. We don't need to. I'm not going to. Like the but also that's why the Civic isn't fully race car that's getting raced all the time, is because we don't need it. The Civic could sit and wait and be fine. Not getting for whenever it's getting, we're it's ready getting for older and it. it's not right. Not getting hurt anymore. No, it's fine. It's there. sitting in the garage, staying nice and dry, right? All ready to go, but the MG needs to go along because it doesn't fit in our life anymore. But I am, I want to do it right and get it to a point where it's going to go, <clears throat> not just for a reasonable price. Like, sure, yes, I'd like to have a reasonable price for it, but I kind of, you know, have this car has been around with me long enough that I want it to go to a home where someone's going to actually have it and use it. You know, same thing with the yeah. Corvette, right? Like go the Corvette. to the right person who's going to appreciate it. Yeah, the Corvette, I don't really care what I get for it. I just want it to go to someone that's going to drive it. The car sat for 20 years. Paul wanted me to get it running again. And we did it. We got it running. We used it. We had really fun with it. And now it just, it's not going to go sit again. I want it to go to someone who's actually going to be jazzed by it and go have fun with it. And we made it nicer in the process too. Oh yeah. So Very much. much. And in and, and you you know, you, you added a chapter to its story. Otherwise right. its story was I was bought, I was loved. I rotted away in a garage. Yep. Yep. Mm. Like a lot of C4s. <laughs> like a lot of C4s. And yeah. a lot of cars. We don't have to limit yeah. it to just Corvettes. There's yeah. plenty of, uh, yeah, you know, at least it didn't end up with a, a murder weapon in a crack pipe. Like the one Jeff had. Right. <laughs> <Sure>. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that a good so, Good idea. Um, yeah. And then, you know, sometimes the, uh, your exit plan or your timeline gets hastened along by a repair you didn't see coming in the 928. It was high pressure, very complex fuel lines underneath an intake that began to explode and fill the V8 Valley full of gas and then dump them onto hot exhaust headers. Mm -hmm. This was, uh, and then when I spent an entire, you know, I think like 12 hours fixing one and another one ruptured, I remembered, oh, this is a desert car, so all the rubber parts are going to be dry, rotted, and this is not going to be the last high-pressure fuel line because the, the 928 does a very high-pressure system. And it just, okay, this is no longer something I want to deal with. And I sent it on its way to some kid who will probably never fix it, <laughs> but it is his Zen garden to go in the garage and okay. just chill out and, and you know, recenter on things in life, which is... I do that with a lot of different projects in my garage, not even all of them automotive. Uh, so that's, that's why I need something of an empty garage on that one. Um, the, uh, I, my favorite story, and I'm, I'm going to force you guys to tell it is the Rolls Royce, what it's new life where it left after it was a race car. Uh, I don't think this ended up turning out all that well, really, frankly. In the end. <laughs> all right. The fantasy story, the version that I would tell. <laughs> why don't is you a great tell story. <laughs> the the, the why guy don't you who, tell this story? The guy who bought it bought it for his dad, who was a you know, blue collar guy in Chicago. And he bought it for his dad so that he could go out to breakfast with his buddies in a Rolls Royce, basically. Didn't need Sounds to get over great. 30 miles an hour. It was a 928. It was great. <laughs> right. Eventually, then we randomly got a call from a mechanic on an Indian reservation in the Midwest somewhere who was working on the car. Didn't really know much about it. It still had a cage and numbers on it. It still had numbers on inside. Still had the lemon sticker on the front. This was like three years later. He was asking if we'd done anything with the fuel system because he couldn't get it to run. And so I described how the fuel system works to him. And which that was seemed to be all news and, uh, and that, no, I hadn't and how to clean the SU carbs out and to, to check that the double ends of the fuel pumps are running and how to check the points on that and stuff. And that's, that's actually I mean, even a better story I, I, no, it, I don't because know. If, if, if he was smart mean. enough to do the detective work to track you down, I he's hope probably smart enough to, to get it. it running. The Citroen I'm sure is a part, it was for parts. It went to a guy 
at Harris Hill Raceway, who uh, that that's where his garage was, where the car was shipped, and he has other SMs, so I'm sure that was a parts car, which is a fine end for that car. Helps life. other ones had, live. Had right. no title for many years, so that that's about as good as it was going to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it had some nice, fairly new parts on it. Those oh, globes yeah. it was, were had lots of great yeah, parts in it, right? With the globes yeah. and the the distributor conversion and all that stuff. It, yeah. Absolutely. That um cottage cheese container that was holding all of the uh, electronics or something. Hey, it uh, it was it separated the the massive electrical connections from everything else with plastic. I thought that was a good idea. It's very lemony. That was yeah. custom. The the yeah. the other nine fourteen is going to get chopped up to help two other nine fourteens live, and that's fine because you know I had nothing in that car at all. Yep. So and uh, yeah, if you still need nine twenty eight parts, I still have a suspicious amount of body panels and in, in the uh, storage area behind my garage. Uh, never fence in anything out of sight. Uh, incidentally, that is always a terrible idea if you're trying to reduce your uh, hoarding tendencies because out of sight becomes out of mind. Mm, storage garages work that way too, except we're yeah. pretty good about that. They, they, yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, Ours the entire storage industry can... is built on that full, on the, on that psychology. You are absolutely yeah. right. Yes. Yeah. Don't put anything in store. If you, if you, that's, a, that, that's why there's a nine 11 in my driveway because the owner knew that if it ended up in storage, the chances of them going and get it are, are, are just terrible. If you, if you find yourself researching storage places, it's time to let it go. Or you have a good reason. Yeah, because like, like race ours cars, is, ours was keeping stuff protected in the winter. That's why we got our storage garage. So, and, and you have a you have a race car storage place, because... and it's also small enough that we cannot afford. You don't have any more room to put st- yeah. what we do right now. But if, but if we... you just start looking for places to store your projects until you can get to them, you're you're on a really 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 slippery slope. Says the guy with two storage spaces in the desert that he's trying to pare down right yep. now. So. Yep. Yeah. Realistically, the only reason we really need the storage is because it's keep it's nice to keep the race cars clean, and so that Chrissy's car can go in the garage in the winter time. One spot goes for Chrissy's car, and the other spot is for Projects. active project. Yes. Yeah. This is great. Good excuse. Okay. Right, is is there anything that we're missing? Once more around the horn, or I hope we changed your mind, or at least thought made you think about things just a little bit differently. Yeah. I don't want you to change your mind. I, I I want you to buy these dumb cars. There's of I the I don't. almost I in Chrissy doesn't of the seventy or so cars that I've had. There's literally only two that I well and truly regret how I got rid of them. The rest of them they they left at at the right time. Didn't feel it always, but they they, they left at the right time, and I I enjoyed owning them. And I, I, I have the same scale that Chris and Chris, you're talking about. It's just, instead of talking about many thousands of dollars, I'm talking maybe a few thousand or even a few hundred dollars. But if, uh, if, if you've got some tips, how do you keep yourself balanced from collecting too many projects or just even your nightmare story of, I thought this would be wonderful and it was horrible. Get a hold of us. Tell us a story. We'd love to hear it. I'll just say this, finish it up with this making smart choices lets you have cooler stuff. There you go. Make an informed, bad decision. Right? Solid <laughs> advice from everyone. That's like, our, that's like our tagline. Yeah. Yeah, I, I want that to be our new tagline. Great, as long yeah. as you know, as long as you know, it's bad and why, and that you can handle it. Yeah. 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 Like Malort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Ah, uh, now All right, speaking moving of along. This, yeah. <laughs> horrible, bad decisions. We we've been exposed to a great many cool cars. We've seen them. We've driven them. We've you know seen them at shows. Um, what is an absolutely awful awful decision? But a really really great car. You know it's going to be painful, but you still want to do it. And I haven't completely. And I, I'll lead off to give my co- uh, co-host time to think. Oh, I've got I'll a few lead- already. Come on. Okay, yeah, there we go. <laughs> God, you make me feel so much better about myself. Um, these I mean, this are... is pie in the sky, so we can talk. We can talk about the ideas all, oh, all yeah. we want. Yeah. Totally. So these are starting to show up in Las Vegas in the buy here, oh, pay what? here lots, and they are getting affordable. And this is the Bentley Bentley Continental GTW yeah. sixteen. Look and... up. There's a hose that goes behind the engine that is actually impossible to get. 
I've looked yes. into them enough. Yes, that that may, that's probably not been done in any of them. Also, it's a phaeton underneath, basically. It is. It is. Reliability it's a, at its finest. Yeah. It well, it's German ish. So, <laughs> I my 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 reasonability is if when uh, when we when we get the house modifications done the way we want them, and I get to expand the garage and I get a proper lift, that I can <laughs> drop the front subframe out of this with the engine on top of it, and then do all the deferred maintenance, and then this drive so it funny. until another thirty eight cent sensor breaks on the back of the motor, and then I sell it for half of what I paid. But uh, the, the, I'm I have that's literally, realistic. <laughs> It makes me feel so much better. <laughs> I have, I have seen these uh, a handful of times. I've actually seen these for less than ten thousand dollars, and they 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 do warn that you know so it, it's a laundry list of things that it needs. But I'm gonna stop sharing and then start sharing again just to show uh, <laughs> what this is. What is available here in Las Vegas? These things. They are quite popular here and they are not necessarily, you know, there's a, yeah, there's, there's one, one for $24,000. Uh, and you know that that nightmare is just waiting. Don't to... take a black light to it. <laughs> Here's one for, you know, 39,000. And I bet in a few months, you'll probably be able to talk this person down. Uh, it's only got 46,000 miles. So just tons of deferred maintenance. It's going to be fabulous <laughs> yep i've got a bunch and they're all british oh please Good. all of them lotus esprit v8 oh yes there was one that was on um one of the auction sites we talked about it on bid nerds and it they are so way cool cheap. looking they are just terrible though so but it's damn, the, yeah, it's the amazing. worst. It's the worst GM. It's the worst of British. Oh, it's but it's yeah. a bespoke Lotus twin turbo V8, but has through a Renault gearbox. Yay! That's gonna work out <laughs> great. It's oh, made, but it's like, going to look kit so car good. level production. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, that all, all mine are British. It's like that, or again, the supercharged Range Rover I that this. I keep always wanting that I never am going to buy because I know it's it's not the right choice um for a dbs yeah like that looks like a spaceship like an old spaceship and it sounds yeah. like a mustang it's fantastic yeah <laughs> there you go all mm -hmm. minor british and forced forced induction british cars <laughs> That is wonderful. My yep. my brother had a a new supercharged Range Rover uh, that he kept, and you know, the, like knowing when to exit. And for him, that was within two years. He immediately turned it back in. But when it was right, you could actually just feel, you could sense how many dinosaurs were dying every time you put the <laughs> throttle down and you heard that supercharger. And it didn't yeah. whine; it it huffed. That's and funny. you can barely feel the peasants as you drive over them. <laughs> yeah. Just like the rolls. Yep. Um, well, I, I'm struggling with this one. I shouldn't, but I am. You're the reasonable one. I know. Um, Bill's Miata is the one that comes to mind, but it doesn't fit all of the soliloquy that, that mental started this on the spot with, um doesn't matter it, it's still well, a completely reasonable you you want it you don't necessarily know you have a need for it and it still I plucks at your heartstrings that's i have a need for it you still um, want it even though you know you shouldn't do it sure that fits but not yes. the uh long list of what mental was going at uh the other one was the uh new and it won't wouldn't be new now the um Land. I wasn't thinking about it until you said something about the Land Rover, uh, the one that's full of electronics that I wanted. Oh, the, the Range Rover Velar. Velar, yes. I was yeah. missing the letters in my head. Um, yes, because I can just picture, I get a little annoyed when my my infotainment system in my 2017 Mercedes doesn't work. I can only imagine the massive amounts of frustration when literally I'm trying to drive home and none of the screens turn on. You're like, <laughs> cool how am i supposed to do anything in this car so i can already feel uh how ridiculous the british 
uh, newer British um, yeah. electronics is not going just to newer. This car. All. No, yeah, but my 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 brother actually had the Velar, and it would just reboot at random times. Like he's driving the dash, the the car would keep driving, but everything would just yes. like shut down. You get the little. <laughs> spinning the, wheel the, of death the spinning wheel of death <laughs> and then it would come back up and he would have to completely reconnect his phone and get all yeah. of his contacts back in it is like blue screen of death on a car yeah that's kind of terrifying so i sat in it at the car show and was like this is lovely i might get one of these i think this would be great so i can bring dakota to lacrosse practice um but <laughs> and then when nothing works at all and it's all smudgy screen like your phone screen uh i'm sure it will be lovely except you can't wipe it on your jeans like everyone does <laughs> You're uh, absolutely right. Did, but did you see did you get a chance to when you experienced it at the car show did you get a chance to see the door handles come out i'm sure i it, it has the proximity key and as you know it's it's got the uh, the flush mounted door handles but as you so come, they're so it's great when when you're when you're uh yeah when you walk up to it right and then they then they 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 slide out so you can pull on them and right. i'm sure that in the snow the or the ice or the electronics problem when the electronics don't work this makes me think of yeah. long long ago uh, I used to have a sh a show car that was a Volkswagen, and you could only it had pop doors, and when you would on the remote didn't work, you couldn't get in the car. Oh, piece of shit! I'm sorry. Um, this is really <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, okay, they're my they're my cars. All we right, done here. This is a good topic. Yes, Thanks for bringing this, this was. Up. Hey, folks, what car do you want that we didn't think of? What dumb idea? Are you There's going so to get many. when you get that giant retirement check and a big enough garage for you to take apart? Or you've had a fire European. sale of all of your hunks of junk, <laughs> stupid cars that your spouse said, get rid of everything here. And you're like, ooh, I have $5,000 now. What am I going to buy? <laughs> <laughs> I could totally right. fix that. Right. Next show. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about learning to drive. Everyone had to learn sometimes, but we're going to tell our stories about uh, what we experienced and we want to hear yours. So not only about our previous show, we want to hear about your uh, experience before the next episode. So get in touch with us. Tell us how you, your hella sweet or butt terrible, terrible, excuse me, terrible story of learning how to drive. And I, yep. Yep. This is a great way to end the show. I just did what I'm supposed to do. I'm sorry. I was typing out the uh, the <laughs> notes for the other stuff. Somebody has yeah. to finish. The I show. figured mental would just kind of fill in with stuff. You did not, sure. For a little while uh, because yeah, usually, yeah. you know, of anything did you, did mental you have a, is good for is randomly talking for a while. Yeah. So. Did you have a relative try and teach you how to drive? Did they yell at you a lot? Did you have that? you know, creepy, not very good wrestling coach uh, for those under a certain age or remember driver's ed in high school, you know, or perhaps the professional driving instructor, English wasn't their first language, whatever it was, learning to drive, stealing your parents' car, borrowing your grandparents' 77 Toyota Celica and driving it around their farm. Uh, Driving just, four hours you know, away in your mom's stolen car when you're 10. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Leaving Florida, headed for California in a stolen car. I want to know what they did to get pulled over. Because, you know, they'd made it four hours following the rules. Holy yeah. crap. All right. <laughs> well, we want to hear your stories. But in the meantime, thanks for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. Also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, building, car theft, because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed the podcast, subscribe. It is free as it should be. Go to iTunes. Give us a rating. Five stars. You know it matters. Thanks. We're going to give us a rating. Tell us why. We're going to read it. Questions, show ideas, comments, anything at all, or telling us your learning to drive story, all the social medias, everyone racers or everyone.racers, everyone.racers at gmail.com. And uh, thanks again. And until next week, uh, keep your bad decisions behind the fence. Or if not, then set it on fire or something. I don't know. Ha, 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 ha.